Hi, welcome to session two of the Small Business Supply Chain Tutorials. This is your host Gil. Today we will be moving on to production scheduling. I will be using the template that is available for download on my website, smallbusinesssupplychain.com. It is available under the How to Create a Production Plan page. It takes you through basically how to make it all and there's the production planning template. For this session we will only look at the various inputs into the planning spreadsheet. Um, there's quite a bit involved with the planning itself so we won't be able to move on to that in this session. Okay, we'll go firstly we'll start with the forecast template. first thing um, we'll need in the production plan is the forecast. So in session one we created the 52 week forecast for each SKU. We then condensed this into a format um, that can be copied across to the production planning template. It's in the sheet here copy to production plan. So first thing we do is we select all the data, the forecasts for all the SKUs for the next 52 weeks. Copy that. We'll go through to the production planning spreadsheet and we're going to paste that into the forecast sheet. We're just going to paste the values in there. There we go. Just make sure when you copy it across that all the SKUs, SKUs line up. Um, you'll see it goes through from A001 to A008. That's all the SKUs I have. Um, in this example, in the forecast, it does the same thing, A001 through to A008. So just make sure that lines up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to the common data. Now this sheet is very important and it will probably require some time and effort to collect all the inputs into the sheet. First thing you'll see here is the target weeks cover. This is how much stock you would like to keep for each SKU or stock keeping unit. There are calculations available that will give you the scientific weeks cover number. Um, I have found that this is for a small business, the complexity of the calculations involved does not really add that much value. Um, what you have to consider when you decide how much weeks cover to keep is the variability of demand from your customers, uh, the level of input you get from them, and on the other hand, the reliability of your own supply chain. As an example, um, we can take the white chalk here. This, I would say, is one of your standard bread and butter products. And the demand would be pretty constant on it. Uh, your equipment would be fine-tuned to run it. And your raw materials supply would be pretty well sorted and steady. Now, you wouldn't have to carry too much stock on a product like this. Some of the other products might be more variable in demand, um, like the example I used is the pink chalk down the bottom there, and also more finicky to produce. You'll want to carry a bit more stock on, on those. Um, typically also new items you'd want to start with a bit more stock and then then see how it settles down. Okay, so basically what I'd say, pick a starting point for your week's cover based on your experience for each product. Um, I have in this example, I have put in some target week's cover for each of the SKUs. Next thing to look at is your production rate, your cases per shift capacity. 
It is also called, often called uh, rated output or design speed, design output of the machine. Um, we'll just call it cases per shift in this spreadsheet. The, there are some decisions you have to make at this point. Um, again, you should only be scheduling your bottleneck, not every piece of equipment in, in your factory. Um, there are easy ways to identify a bottleneck. I'm, I'm not actually going to go into too much details about it in the air. Um, the best resource I've come across is a book called The Goal by Ilya Goldratt. Um, I, will, I will post a link of that on my website, smallbusinesssupplychain.com. Um, if you need help identifying bottleneck or even aligning and planning other processes in the factory with the bottleneck, please read The Goal. It will really help you a lot. Okay, now um, we've got the capacity or the design speed of the machine. The spreadsheet also allows you to put in a target cases cover. Um, the, I have found this being useful where a lot of customers, or you have a lot of customer activity on a certain SKU, and the customers is likely to buy in large quantities. Uh, for example, in full pallets. Batch size is the next one. Um, it is also a calculated field. It's normally driven by economic factors. The smaller your batch, the higher your waste, and the more changeovers you will have on your equipment. So it, it will drive up the cost in your supply chain. The larger the batch, on the other hand, the more stock you will have to carry. So there are again some very good formulas and calculations you can get to work out the optimal number, number uh, for you to keep on each SKU. As a general principle, try to keep your batches as small as possible without letting your waste get out of control. You should have a basic idea of the, the limitations of your equipment and what you'll be able to do with it. The last number on here to have a look at is your OEE or your overall equipment efficiency. This is also a calculated number. Um, what you do is you take your actual output over a shift as a percentage of your theoretical output. So how much you should be able to make if the machine ran without stopping uh, for a whole shift. It should also include all all downtime. Things like change over time and setup time should be included there as well. This number will ensure that your production plan is realistic and achievable. Okay, one more page for inputs. The national stock this is where you enter the actual stock you have at the beginning of the week or at the beginning of this planning process. Um, this is your starting point. Okay, um, that is all the outputs. If you need a bit of a refresher, just go through um, back to the smallbusinesssupplychain.com website have a look there, that will give you a basic idea of what you need. Um, there is a lot that goes into creating a good production plan. Um, we will stop there for this session. The next session we will start the actual planning process. Um, yeah, that's great. Please let me know if you have any questions at this point. Um, I will try and answer as much as I can uh, through the the website smallbusinesssupplychain.com. Thank you.